This is the Sam Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star today's show is the Next Level Racing Wheel Stand DD. The Wheel Stand DD fills a niche in our market for high end sim racers with limited space. The Wheel Stand DD is a wheel stand only, meaning that it comes with no seat. You'll roll up a desk chair, roll up a dining room chair, or even pull this thing up to the couch in order to use it. The Wheel Stand DD goes for $299 and will have a future expansion or add on seat mod that turns it into something similar to a GT Track full chassis from Next Level Racing. And when put together, the full cockpit version of the Wheel Stand DD will also work with the Next Level Racing Motion Platform V3 so you can really complete this full package. The Wheel Stand DD is compatible with a huge selection of wheels, pedals, and shifters. Just about every combination made for sim racing is going to work on the Wheel Stand DD. On top of that, it's built to be strong. So strong, in fact, that it'll handle the load of the strongest wheels on the market, including direct drive steering wheels. The Wheel Stand DD is highly adjustable, and it also comes with a shifter mount that can be mounted left or right hand drive included with the purchase. And its overall shape looks something like a heavy duty sawhorse or something built to do construction on top. I think I put a whole car on top of the Wheel Stand DD. So at $299, it is a fairly expensive wheel stand, but again, it is the only wheel stand on the entire market that claims it can handle the loads of a direct drive steering wheel. When the shipping box arrives, you'll be a little surprised by its weight. It comes in at 52 pounds with eight pounds of that being packaging, making this sucker 44 pounds, which if you take note, is the same weight as an entire play seat evolution, all built into a wheel stand itself. The wheel stand DD is built out of laser cut, robot welded steel in a matte finish, and most of the adjustments are made via pre-drilled mounting holes throughout its design. So let's go ahead and unpack the box and inventory all of our parts and talk about the way it goes together. The main structure of the Next Level Racing Wheel Stand DD is this hinge point and it's pre-assembled and it makes up the bulk of the weight. We also have a pedal tray cross brace and the pedal tray or deck itself. There are two cross bases built to hold the main stand open and sturdy. There's a shifter mounting arm, a shifter deck, and a handbrake adapter plate as well. The wheel deck's adjustable height arms are already installed into the main base, and then the final part of the stand is the wheel deck cross brace. In addition to that, there is a well-printed and very clear instruction manual, adjustable feet, locking caster wheels, finishing caps, and cable management clips. And then finally, and much appreciated by me, the IKEA-esque blister pack of nuts, bolts, washers, and all the tools you're gonna need to assemble the wheel stand DD, including extra parts for the future, which is really nice to have on hand. Now, when it comes to assembling the rig, it is actually very simple and it goes very easily and you're probably gonna spend more time adjusting the rig than it will take to actually assemble it. We start by opening our sawhorse base and then installing the cross brace on each side, holding it open. They are angled on each end and fit perfectly, and they already have their mounting bolts pre-installed into each end, with one cross brace going on each side of the base. Now, since this isn't my first rodeo, I went ahead and skipped ahead in the instructions a little bit at this point, and I went ahead and flipped the thing over while it was still fairly light to install all the adjustable feet. For me, I wasn't gonna use the caster wheels, so it was six adjustable feet, and then flipping this thing back over again. The next step is to extend the wheel deck arms up. You can see a bunch of threaded holes in these extensions, and when at the proper height, two bolts per side will lock them down into the base structure. The wheel deck, which is pre-drilled for just about every wheel on the market, then mounts between the two uprights. The deck has a folded over leading edge for extra strength and then uses a pivot point along with a series of pre-drilled holes in its side to adjust the angle of the wheel deck. It is held in place with four bolts along with a self-locking nut supplied with the rig. The pedal tray cross brace is then mounted between the main brace cross braces. You can estimate the front to back distance that you will need and then mount it with four bolts, washers, and locking nuts, much like we did the wheel deck up top, and then the pivot point with seven holes for angle adjustment. The pedal tray installs onto the cross brace. On each side of the tray, there are slots that line up with the threaded holes on the cross brace. We use four of the supplied bolts and lock it down in position. The shifter mounting arm can be mounted on the left or right side of the stand. It mounts into the threaded holes of the wheel deck uprights with two more bolts. 
the shifter deck then mounts onto the end of that arm with three nuts and bolts and they ask you to use the silver spiked washers for extra bite in this spot. If you're looking to also use the handbrake, you can then install that plate onto the shifter deck via the four mounting bolts pre-installed into that adapter and then mount the shifter and handbrake onto that plate. Now once the wheel stand DD is all built up, it's time to put our equipment on it. And of course, like I mentioned at the beginning, it's compatible with a huge variety, just about every wheel, pedal, and shifter on the market. So that shouldn't be a problem, including direct drive wheels. Now again, remember at the beginning, they claim this wheel stand is built strong enough to handle a direct drive wheel. That means maybe as much as 30 Newton meters of force being delivered at that wheel deck. So I'm gonna start things off right at the top. I'm going with my Sim Experience AccuForce direct drive wheel and I'm going with my Rick Motec real gear hydraulic pedals that put out about 100 pounds of force. For my Sim Experience AccuForce steering wheel, there are four mounting holes. The Next Level Racing Wheel Stand DD came with extra nuts and bolts for mounting, so I used those and four bolts later, the wheel was solidly mounted. The Rick Motec pedals come with four mounts mounted to their base. They line up with the left to right slots of the pedal tray that you might use with like a Thrustmaster pedal set. I slide them all the way left for my desire, tighten them down, and now they are mounted. And then finally, my shifter and handbrake. The shifter is an SHH shifter, and it uses four bolts that line up with either the shifter plate and or the adapter. Four bolts for the shifter, two bolts for the handbrake, and now I have all of my components mounted onto a wheel stand. That alone is fairly impressive when you consider it's a direct drive wheel, heavy duty pedals, a shifter and handbrake all on a wheel stand. So I do wanna talk about dialing this in and getting it really set for me, but I also wanna separate and talk about all the adjustability, give you some of the measurements of how much height you can adjust the deck, how many angles and things like that. So let's start off with the wheel deck and its height adjustment. The expansion bars can be adjusted within about eight and a half inches up and down. That means a wheel deck of about 30 and a half inches from the ground at its high point and about 23 inches from the ground at its lowest. The angle of the wheel deck is adjusted by loosening the back bolts or the pivot spot and then removing the front bolts on the wheel deck cross brace. There are a total of seven different holes allowing for the angles of between about 15 degrees lean back to about 25 degrees lean forward. The pedal tray can be slid back and forth on its rails about eight inches of adjustment. And then on top of that, the entire cross brace can be moved forward and backward another 12 inches on the base. Its angle adjustment works just like the wheel deck with seven different angles from flat to about 30 degrees of incline. There are also supplied reinforcing bolts to prevent the top from flexing when using a heavily tilted pedal tray. Now mounting your equipment is one thing, and for a lot of rigs that can be a challenge and you might have to bust out on a drill. In the case of the Next Level Racing Wheel Stand DD, it was really easy to mount all of our equipment, but the next step can be a challenge, whether you're talking about a full-size SIM chassis or a wheel stand, and that comes down to comfort and confidence. Getting all your equipment exactly where you want them to be for you. Now in the case of a wheel stand, it really starts with your chair selection. What chair is gonna dictate the height and the angle that you're sitting sitting at that wheel stand and therefore all other adjustments will be made after choosing that. Now when I think back years and years ago, I used to race on a desktop. I'd use a typical business swivel chair on rollers and I'd put my wheel up on the desk and when I hit the brake I'd slide back or when I got impatient I'd swivel the chair and do goofy things like that. And then at some point I went to a full size chassis and said no more of that. So when going back to a wheel stand, the first thing I can tell you is a swivel desk chair was out. That was not going to be in the running. I want more stability. I'm using a direct drive wheel. I'm using heavy duty pedals. I want something stable and a little more comfortable as well. So I opted for a dining room chair. Another thing that most people have in their house ready to go. And this was going to dictate the angle and height that I was sitting at. And then I could move on to the adjustments for me starting off with the wheel deck because now I know how high and what angle I want that wheel to be at. I would need to adjust it high enough for my driving position. On the wheel stand DD, as we move the wheel deck upward, it also extends farther forward from the base. This means it'll be pushing us back and that will affect our pedal placement later. My best mounting position was about 10 holes up on each side and then I tightened all four bolts down to hold the uprights firmly in place. 
I then adjusted my angle and found I was one position lean back from flat and that would be about perfect for my wheel on this chair. Now that we have our seat and wheel positions where they will be, we can focus on the pedal adjustment. I'll be needing the pedals a bit closer than I initially installed the cross brace. There are channels in the pedal tray that could be slid front and back, but I really want to keep the pressure point as close to the cross brace as possible. I moved the cross brace closer and left it flat for my pedals and that also worked out to be just about perfect. Now we have a good driving position and we are ready to race. And in some quick wheel turning exercises, it seems that the rig is very rigid and very stable. Now when it comes down to the driving aspects of a review of a full chassis or a sim rig of any kind, there are so many factors to take into account. Obviously things like sturdiness and how much, it, how cool it looks and how much adjustability it has and all those things. In the case of a wheel stand, a lot of it really starts for me at the chair, even though that's not what's supplied here. But when I'm gonna go ahead and use a dining room table chair, it's at a flatter angle. It's a little more upright than I really like in a full chassis, a little more lean back so my comfort is already compromised but that's something you just have to make the adjustment for and you can always select the perfect chair but the wheel stand did give me the adjustability to get the ideal driving position considering the chair that I was using so that was the essential first step of the driving portion of the review getting it so despite having a compromised chair that the wheel was exactly the height exactly the angle and exactly working the way I wanted it to be in relation to where it is with the pedals height angle and all those things as well so that first part of the driving aspect driving position was easily obtained by using all the adjustment within the stand. Then it comes down to the other features of driving and how it handled things like the wheel deck rigidity. And at first touch, everything was pretty good for a portable sim racing option. And the first touch of my monster 100 pound brake pedal, the chair immediately slid backward. Not really a big surprise being that I am on hardwood floors, so it is fairly slippery, but at the same time, I don't think that would have happened on a regular pedal set like Logitech, Fanatic, or Thrustmaster. So I had to come up with a solution. So I grabbed a couple of old leather belts, I wrapped them around the chair legs, wrapped them around the stand, and despite making it a little bit harder to get in and out of, mission accomplished. My chair was now staying in place and I could drive the rig. The wheel deck right from the start was very rigid, even under the heavy load of my AccuForce wheel. The wheel stand's deck is stronger than many full chassis out there, which is kind of a surprise for just a wheel stand. I could feel no flex left to right, I could feel no flex front to back, and I don't feel any twisting whatsoever. Even when I turned the wheel up to a higher power, it was held perfectly stable and the wheel deck did its job perfectly. The pedal tray also held things together pretty well. After all, it was strong enough to push me back in my seat. Now there is a hint of flex going on, but I really wasn't feeling or affected negatively from the flex when driving. And in fact, even with the chair belted the wheel stand under heavy braking, it would actually tilt me back slightly in the chair. So it is overall very strong, stronger than the chair being separated from the rig. And then comes the shifter mount. The shifter mount got the job done in the most minimalistic way possible. And if you're using a super lightweight shifter like a Logitech or the TH8 RS or even the SHH, the mount will hold it where it needs to be, but it's very wiggly. It's not as much flexing, which it does, but it's more the left to right and up to down wiggle or play that it has. The shifter mount also holds the handbrake if being used. With that mount being fairly wobbly, it allows the handbrake to wiggle as well. And if you're using a heavy duty handbrake, it'll actually tilt the rig towards you on top when you pull on the handbrake. It should be okay when using a Thrustmaster or Fanatic handbrake, but anything heavy duty might be too much. Of all the areas of the Next Level Racing Wheel Stand DD, the shifter mount is the weakest link in the chain. Overall, the Wheel Stand DD did its job very well. With its adjustability in just about every dimension, with its compatibility for just about any type of hardware, it was quick to set up, it was easy to adjust and dial in, and it was sturdy as it could be even with my heavy duty gear and would only work better with more standard gear like Thrustmaster, Fanatic, or Logitech. 
So we've already included everything that's covered in the Next Level Racing Wheel Stand DD for $299. We've talked about its assembly. We've talked about its adjustability. We've talked about getting it dialed in for our particular chair. And we've even covered all the aspects of driving. And I feel like we've been here a very long time covering what is just a wheel stand. But it is such a substantial wheel stand that it's almost like review reviewing a rig. So just to make sure it's very crystal clear, make sure I've covered everything, let's go ahead and break it down with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line, starting off with the good, of course, and that being, this is the most stable wheel stand ever. will actually work with a direct drive steering wheel. Pre-drilled for almost every wheel on the market, including AccuForce and the new Podium. Pre-drilled for almost every pedal set on the market, even including my Rickmotec real gear pedals. Adjustable wheel deck, height and angle. Adjustable pedal tray, front to back and angle. Lockdown angle adjustments for the pedal tray and the wheel deck. No slides, fixed position. Can be expanded into a full chassis. Coming soon. Comes with a shifter mount, mountable left or right hand drive. Space saver. It's about half the size of a full size chassis. Great for a VR rig or a minimalistic setup. Easy to build, lots of extra hardware. And now on to the not so good. And it is a little expensive for just a wheel stand. Paint can scratch and it will scratch on the uprights if adjusted a lot or on the mounting points if moved around a lot. Shifter mount wiggles. Almost too heavy to be portable and it's not collapsible. Must attach your chair to the stand on slippery floors or rolling chairs. Heavy handbrake will pull rig. And now on to the bottom line. When it comes to wheel stands, I have to admit, for the most part, I think a wheel stands only for the beginner or for the entry level sim racer or for those who are on a very, very tight budget or for those who absolutely have zero extra space and need it to be collapsible and portable and you could just throw it into a closet. Now, when it comes to the portability of the next level racing wheel stand DD, you almost have to rule it out. Once it's built up, once it's fully assembled, it's not collapsible, it's not really going to fit away in the closet. It also is very, very heavy, especially if you're using a direct drive wheel and a heavy pedal set. This thing's going to be a little bit heavy to move all the way across the house or into a different room. It is light enough to move aside, so you could take it from your desk or from your TV and push it aside, but it's still going to have presence. It's still going to be there. Then at $300, it's not exactly cheap or inexpensive either, unless comparing it to a full-size rig. It's less in price than most full chassis, but it's much more than most wheel stands. However, it does solve the space issue for many people. It is about half the size of a full chassis. So for those sim racers out there who are demanding something extremely stable, something that is strong enough for a direct drive wheel and heavy duty pedal set, the wheel stand DD is strong enough to fit the bill and it is smaller than a full chassis. You just pull your chair up to it and you're up in sim racing. This will also be a great option for people who race at a desktop but need to maintain using that desktop for work or web browsing or other things. You can slide this in, have that permanently mounted heavy duty gear, do your racing and then slide it out of the way. Sure, it's very heavy. Sure, it's not collapsible and gonna go away in the closet, but you can move it into place and move it out of place. And if you use the rolling casters, it's made a little bit easier. So that will be an option. Ultimately, my overall opinion of the Next Level Racing Wheel Stand DD is this thing is a serious beast. I never imagined actually using a wheel stand in a serious racing situation with serious gear. 
I have to admit that outside of the guy who absolutely has to be able to collapse his rig and put it away because he doesn't have space and the wife won't let it be there, I've never thought of a wheel stand as being a serious piece of hardware. It was for the guy who wanted to just pull it out, throw it in front of the TV, play some Gran Turismo or Forza. But in the case of people who want to use serious gear, the people who are serious sim racers, this thing again, it is a beast. It can handle the heaviest of loads we put on it. Another one of the reasons that I take a wheel stand typically out of contention for serious sim racing is their lack of adjustability for most wheel stands. But when looking at the Next Level Racing Wheel Stand DD, I can tell you the amount of adjustment you have for your wheel, for your pedals, for everything, literally, is the same amount you would have on a full chassis. And that's very rare in a wheel stand and something that makes this very special and again, built for a much more serious sim racer than the typical amateur. In fact, I had a harder time selecting a chair and getting it secured to the rig than I did in getting this adjusted to sitting at that chair. But once I did, it was sturdy and it was strong and it was wiggle free outside of the shifter mount. As much as the Next Level Racing Wheel Stand DD is built strong enough to handle a direct drive wheel, I don't think that a DD user is its typical client. I think usually those people are looking for something a little bit more substantial, like a full size rig, and my logic being this. A direct drive wheel base can cost you $1,000 and more, and a wheel to go on that base can cost you a few hundred dollars up to a few thousand dollars as well, and most of those don't come with pedals, so you'll be looking at a heavy duty pedal set on top of that. So money is not their option. However, space still can be the option. Not having enough room to allocate a full chassis could still be a reasoning and a justification for somebody needing an option just like this to solve that problem. And I also think it's a perfect wheel stand for VR users. Maybe you used to race in triple screens and needed all this dedicated space for sim racing, but now with VR, you're looking to minimize your setup and this would accomplish that goal as well. It's also for some sim racers who have a vision of the future as an upgradable chassis. If you know you're gonna be on that hardcore sim racing level someday, but you're just starting out, this will work with whatever equipment you put on it and it will be upgradable, not in terms just of putting better equipment, stronger equipment on it, but also someday adding a seat and turning it into a full chassis so you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. But for me, the main customer, the person that the Next Level Racing Wheel Stand DD, who it's really for, it might not even be a direct drive wheel user. It might be a hardcore sim racer. It is going to be a hardcore sim racer who might be using a Logitech Thrustmaster or Fanatic setup, but they want something hardcore and serious with the adjustability and the rigidity of a full size chassis. They just don't have enough space. And this is the only wheel stand that I've ever tested that can actually accomplish those goals. I think this rig is also perfect for the hardcore console user. And there are many of us out there, people who take their GT Sport or their Forza Motorsport very seriously, and they're now stepping up to the Fnatic Podium wheelbase. That thing's a monster. You're gonna need a serious wheel stand. And again, this is the only one that is strong enough to take that load compared to the other wheel stands available or any that I've ever tested. This thing is a beast. It is sturdy. It is rigid and it is pro gear, which are things that I never say about a wheel stand, but it still might not be for everybody. For the super serious, for the super hardcore, they probably tuned out a long time ago. But for those who have the challenges that we've discussed, this is about the only option of this caliber. It just isn't quite just a wheel stand in terms of putting it in a closet and just forgetting about it, pulling it out when you need it. It is a substantial piece of hardware. So I hope I've told you everything that you want to know about the Next Level Racing Wheel Stand DD. I hope I've answered any questions that you might have. And if you want to check it out for yourself, you can go to nextlevelracing.com and see everything that they tell you about it as well. That's going to do it for this one. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thumbs up if you enjoyed the show. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole and I'll see you on the track.